But all right, let's go deeper. Conscious mind. So it is the mind that the physical body uses here in the third dimension, you know, height, width, and depth. The duty of the conscious mind is to create life experiences in order to learn from. So every life experience that we've had, the whole reason is so that we can learn from it, you know, find something to learn from it. And how do we do that? You know, just like in, in, in a dream, you know, food represents knowledge because that's what you are learning, the knowledge that you are learning, the understandings that you are building. Oh, I under, oh, because of that experience, I understand compassion more. I understand friendship more. I understand loyalty more. I understand abundance more. I understand um, co uh, communication in a deeper way. I understand leadership in a deeper way. I understand humility in a deeper way. I understand submission in a deeper way. I understand uh, drive and passion in a, deep, in a deeper way. You know, whatever it is. To build these deeper understandings, that is the purpose, you know. So, like, w the way we do that, the best way to do that that I know of, is to, you know, break down the same way that we absorb nutrients, our body, break down the life experiences, just like your teeth break down the food, and then once you're able to break down the experience, then it's that you become a little more sub objective. You're not so stuck in it. You know, it's like, okay, let me break down what really happened. Okay. Does this really happen? Let me break it down. Okay, I've broken it down. What can I actually learn from this? You know, what deeper understanding can I gain from this? Okay, and then once you pull out that deeper understanding after breaking it down, oh, okay, you know what? I, you know what? Okay, yeah, I can learn to be more patient from this. You know what? I need, I, okay, patience. If I'm more patient, then things may develop into what I desire more if i just give it time to actually come to fruition that's kind of what i've learned from this experience so let me take that learning and move it to the next experience oh, okay i wouldn't have learned that if i didn't have this experience that i was previously you know upset about and now that i've learned that i can let go of the actual experience i can you know forgive the person i can let go of it i can you know forgive myself i can move on you know, so that's like the body you extract, once you extract, once you break down the food and extract the nut nutrients, the nutrition that becomes a permanent part of your body, then you can let go of the waste, you know, because if you don't let it go, it becomes toxic to the body, you know, you got to let that shit go. So just like in life, you got to let it go or else it'll toxify your consciousness, your mind. And so, but also just like your, just like your uh, nutrients become permanent parts of your body it becomes the cells the tissues the bones you know the blood it becomes all of that you know the nutrients that we eat from the food that we eat you know the vitamins and everything become these different parts you know the brain different parts of it becomes who we are the same thing that moves us into the purpose you know the the purpose of the conscious mind is to then learn from your life experiences and feed those understandings of the self life in the universe whatever it is and creation into the subconscious mind and to make a permanent part of the self. So those understandings that we're learning, the nutrients that we're extracting from life, we are then feeding into our soul and it becomes who we are. You know, so, you know, if, if you came into this life as someone who just understands how to communicate and the importance of communication, you know, you grew up and your siblings, they didn't really, they weren't that great at communication. But you knew the value of communication. You knew how to communicate. And it was very, and you were just seen as someone who communicated really well. You know, that might've been that, you know, in 1412, you, you know, were a, the leader of a clan in Uzambi, some tribe that doesn't even exist anymore, you know? And so you, and you understood that the importance that you had to communicate to your tribe because you were leading them so that they could understand why you were leading them in the way that you were leading them. And you understood the power of communication in that lifetime. And that became a part of who you are to where this lifetime you're born and the conscious mind and physical body is new, but the soul is the same and you already have that understanding. So however you develop in the first five, six, seven years of your life, you're still someone at your core who understands communication and the power of communication you might not consciously understand why you're like that but as a soul you know why
So that's the purpose of the conscious mind to feed these understandings that we gain from our life experiences. If we, you know, choose to, you know, kind of do the work and break them down, put them into there. We feed that into our soul for our soul to continue to store in that storehouse of wisdom that we carry with us. And so that's another reason why it's so powerful and, and important to connect with your soul, to connect with your subconscious mind, to unify the two. And the power of the conscious mind is reasoning. You know, so a lot of people like really get in, into like, that's why a lot of people who are just like stuck in the physical are very, very high on logics and, and being logical with things, you know, but also, you know, logical is very, um, you know, left brain, which is like analytical. And, you know, it's, it's also, you know, like naturally, people tend to view men as very analytical and women as very, you know, intuitive and more feeling. So, you know, that's the same thing. Power of the conscious mind. Conscious mind is masculine, aggressive. Subconscious mind is feminine, intuitive. You know, so reasoning is pretty much just an, an, being very analytical. Logical. All of us understand reasoning. But what I'm trying to get to is that um, the core values of reasoning, the three keys of reasoning are your memory, your attention, and your imagination. Being able to use your memory to assess what has occurred in the past, use your attention to assess what is occurring in the present, and using your imagination to assess what is likely or what is possible or what is probable to occur within the future. And from there, from the vantage point of all three, that is when, and when, when you're making your decisions and you're, and you're contemplating things from that perspective, that is when you are a master at reasoning, using your reasoning ability. That is when you have a strong level of reasoning. So um, any questions here about the conscious mind? All right. This is, so yeah, the conscious mind is what the body uses. It's what we're most familiar with. Um, sometimes we're conscious of uh, what's going on in the conscious mind, and a lot of it we're unconscious of. But the, un the conscious mind will lie to you. You know, the ego is associated with the conscious mind, it's attached with the conscious mind. Uh, we have a question here. I might be asking this wrong, but how much does the conscious mind or, oh gosh, what am I trying to say? When you dream sometimes, can mm -hmm. your conscious mind and the things you were experiencing during, during the day be in the dream, but not really mean anything? I guess what I'm trying to say is sometimes I dream yep. um, extended situations from real life things that happened earlier in the day. Mm -hmm. Like okay. if we go to the store or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the dream, I dreamt that we went in the store and bought different things than we actually bought. Yeah. That gets confusing sometimes. Why is that? Yeah. Okay. That's a great question. So I, I get that a lot. Uh, also, kind of a, also along the lines of like how you may be, you know, start dreaming of something and then you're, you start, you start all of a sudden dreaming of, you know, detectives looking at a crime scene in, in the last five minutes of your dream. And then you wake up and you, there's a T, the TV still on and you're watching the first 48 or something, you know, or, or CSI. Um, so kind of where like your physical life is kind of feels like it's bleeding into your dream. Right. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. What what, what yeah. does that mean when it just because then you wake up and sometimes if you didn't if you don't get enough sleep or um, even like, let's say you drank too much alcohol the night before. I noticed if I do drink too much one night, my dreams are so distorted that when I wake up, it could be Tuesday and I'm totally convinced it's still Monday. Yeah. Yeah. OK, so. um when we dream, like I said, you're dreaming in the subconscious mind. And when we're awake, we're out here in the conscious mind, in the physical. But they're all still a part of this entire, our, our entire mind. Now, so that's important to keep in mind. <laughs> that, it's, that it's all kept in mind. <laughs> but um, when, like I was saying, when you, when you the, how, we, how we manifest things with our thoughts is that the thoughts that we think are imprinted into the mental level here and they fall down into through the through the subconscious mind and physicalize out here in the physical so when we're dreaming 
we're depending on which level we're at, we're looking around at the thoughts within our subconscious mind that have not yet manifested. And when we're awake out here in the physical, we're looking around at the thoughts that have already manifested. You know, you being in the grocery store, you had a thought in the past that manifested that into the present. You know, oh, and you know, you probably maybe even made a list in the past, you know, wrote down those thoughts. And so you and image yourself in the grocery store going through the aisles to get, I need to get cheese, I need to get eggs, I need to get bread, blah, 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 blah. And then you actually physicalize and had that experience, you know? And so there is a connection between the two. One is the thoughts that you have not yet manifested. One is the thoughts that will manifest or that, that already have manifested. And so that's, that's why you can also not just interpret dreams in the universal language of mind. You can better understand your experiences from that. You know, if you're having an experience of being in the grocery store, buying your groceries, you know, places represent, uh, you know, places are a space to exist. So in the, in the dreams or in the universal language of mind, it's a play, it's the space where we exist mentally, you know, our state of mind, our frame of mind. So a grocery store is all about identifying and separating what you give value to. You know, I, I value this for this much. You know, if, if, if you need bread and you go to the store and bread's $50 a loaf, yeah, you might not need bread anymore. You know, you might've told yourself, I need bread. I need to go get bread. I need to go get bread. And then you stand in front of the bread, it's $50. I, I no longer need bread, you know? So it's all about what you place value on. And so, oh, okay, bread's, you know, two twenty five dollars a loaf. I, I think that that is equal value for what I'm receiving. Okay, I'll get it. So a store, so being in the grocery store is going to represent how in the present moment you are assessing what you value in your life, you know? And, and that may be a mere basic function of, I value the need to survive. And so I need to get the, um, you know, ingredients and utensils and things that I need in order to survive and sustain my body and myself and my family, you know, but also on your ride there and on the ride home while you're walking through, you may also be thinking about what other things you value in your life or somewhere throughout the day, you may also be thinking about that, you know, consciously or unconsciously. And so then even though you did that during the day in the dream, you then go home and you dream about also being at the grocery store you know, or maybe the next day you dream about the grocery store, et cetera, you know, or like what I talked about, um, you know, TikTok the other day about being at work, you know, it's very common that people have where they're at work all day, go home and go to sleep. Then they're at work all night in their dream just to wake up and go right back to work, you know, because during the work represents being in a productive state of mind. So being at work, you're at work all day, so you're, you're already in a productive state of mind, you know, because you're trying to produce things at work. But are you doing it very well? Are you very scattered and unorganized mentally, you know? And so then you go to sleep and you dream about being in that productive state of mind. So it's a reflection of the previous day or two. So, you know, like I said in the beginning, your dreams are reflecting the previous couple of days. You know, I was kind of throwing the work one in there to help you better identify the correlation of being, you know, a state of mind as well as, you know, the actual place and the, and the correlation between the two. So you can see how you can then dream, have the dream that's the exact same of what you experienced in life. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Perfect. All right. So let's move on to uh, next slide. <clears throat> 